What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. It looks like Ubisoft has stepped in it again as um, hashtag hold Ubisoft accountable is trending in the gaming space and for, well, the normal things. Look, Ubisoft is a company that uh, holds several game franchises that I really enjoy and has continued to um, milk them for cash. The latest Assassin's Creed a shell of its former self. So many microtransactions and, and add-ons that one wonders exactly how much the game was before they chopped it all up and sold it back to us. See, that's what gaming companies have been doing now. Um, you know, instead of raising the price of games, which they've also done, uh, they've started just removing sections of games and then selling it back to us as DLC. Uh, selling absurd XP boosters and cosmetics, which, by the way, I am 100% fine that they exist. XP boosters in a single player game, you're only robbing yourself. You're not you're not like I mean if you want to get through the game faster, that's your right. And if and if they want to sell it to you for 5 bucks, I I just don't care. Cosmetic same thing. Now we can argue about uh overpriced cosmetics, which we see many in, uh, which happens often in free to play games. The thing with Ubisoft is many of their games start out at the 60 or 70 dollar price tag only to have all this stuff baked back in. Uh, there's a lot of games that I really enjoy, but Ubisoft has a long and illustrious history of being absolute garbage. Today, there's several threads trending on Twitter that I'll try to summarize for you. You've got uh, Joe uh, here saying that uh, a bunch of resources explaining why Ubisoft needs to be held accountable for their mistreatment of employees as well as various other business malpractices. Here's why this is going to fail is because They've cast too far, too wide of a net. Uh, I saw an original vid video done by Laser, which was very well done, uh, but focused on both the treatment of employees and the insane microtransactions in the games. Uh, to be honest, you're not going to get rid of the microtransactions, probably, unless you stop buying them. Uh, this is the same that we talk about with Disney. You know, Disney Plus, getting rid of Gina Carano. Uh, you know, we needed to stop paying... Disney plus money. Uh, that said, their numbers just keep going up. So uh, at least we can sleep at night feeling like, all right, well, I'm not giving you my money. Uh, the Is it Far Cry? Does Far, Ubisoft make Far Cry? I feel like, am I mixing that up? Um, I'm pretty sure I'm right. You know, I'm excited for uh, Far Cry. I, I, I was late into the... Uh, Far Cry World. Um, I thought, I think five was the first one I played, and I had an absolute blast. I'm not saying the game was like a technical masterpiece, but I had a blast with it. I loved the story, and I even uh, got to play with some friends. We would go and do the raids and stuff like that and have fun. So they say in the summer of 2020, we initially became aware of claims against Ubisoft from various employees within the company. That was followed by a litany of brilliant videos by Jim Sterling explaining the hypocrisy of the company as well as going in-depth on things they covered up. Then over the summer, Assassin's Creed Sisterhood was created in an effort to support women in the Assassin's Creed community, as well as push for more female representation from Ubisoft. They went on to raise $11,000, don't care. Uh, now, at this point, um, sects of the Assassin's Creed community believed that an independent investigation of Ubisoft was going underway. Unfortunately, the rest of the results of the investigation show that Ubisoft had done little to improve the workplace environment. Now, what are they talking about here? Um, there are uh, things that go on at Ubisoft that are classified as a toxic work environment. I don't work there, so I can't speak to that um, specifically. But I also know that Gen Zers, Zoomers, are extraordinarily sensitive and uh, many things get blown out of proportion. The truth of the matter uh, between Ubisoft being the worst place on the planet to work and the best place is obviously someplace in between. But GamesIndustry.biz posts, um, as legal proceedings are kickstarted, internal sources point at the lack of accountability since reports of a toxic culture emerged last year. Now, last year, there was a big hullabaloo about um, employees and, 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 and actually some genuinely bad stuff. But 
This writes, Ubisoft has reportedly made minimal changes following allegations of bad behavior. Ubisoft is not out of the woods yet, as of following the numerous claims of bad behavior between men and women at the company, I think you can know what I'm talking about there, an investigation by a French publication published in early May revealed that the first wave of legal proceedings were start due to start this month in relation to harassment. The collection uh, action, collective action is led by uh, Solidarius Inform, I don't know, some company, a games workers union uh, that had previously called for testimonies to build a case against Ubisoft. Since the wave of claims targeting Ubisoft's toxic work culture, by the way, that's alleged, which also pointed at serious dysfunction in its HR departments, the company had attempted to make changes, but the impact of these changes seemed to have been minimal so far, the publication reported. Director of HR, who stepped down following the claims alongside other Ubisoft executives back in July, has only just left the company and is being replaced by Chief People Officer Annika Grant, who previously spent three years at Uber. Ubisoft has previously appointed uh, other people a VP of Global Diversity and Inclusion, what a pointless job, who also came from Uber. But an elected representative from Ubisoft's Social and Economic Committee said that they don't expect anything to come out of these appointments, as the HR staff who covered the bad behavior are still in the position, covered up for it. Um, some of the men at the heart of the bad behavior are still in their jobs, such as Florent Castle Castle Nerak, who heads Ubisoft's owned NATO, who was accused of being bad by a dozen employees. Now, these are claims. Generally, when one person says something, okay, maybe it's a, you know, a little odd. Um, but uh, when you have a dozen, there's this is something that generally needs to get looked into. That doesn't automatically mean it's correct. Uh, as we saw many times, you know, during the me as well movement with lots of people coming forward and almost not one single, I mean, I think only two um, actual arrests, at least one we know with Harvey, but um, you see toxic culture at Ubisoft connected to dysfunction in HR department. About half of recent cases of toxic behavior unearthed at Ubisoft had previously been flagged to HR, recent reports suggest. Now, I don't know why they would have quote unquote covered it up. Maybe it's not something that big. Um, in Canada, quote, nothing has changed since the apport appointment of Christoph uh, Durenz, who happens to be uh, their current CEO's cousin. In July 2020, a source told La Telegram, what's more, new harassment cases have been reported since, but those who reported the issues were sidelined in December 2020. Initiative were put forward by employees in groups to try and solve the issue, including, let's not, let's not call it a crisis, let's, let's, let's use more realistic language. And I want to be very clear, I'm not stumping for Ubisoft here. Um, I, just, I am just skeptical of employees who are whining about their jobs and 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 run to games journalism outlets to say that they were you know that and and fluff up and, and reach the front page of these news uh, sites and and before they ever go to the cops or before they ever go you know file a claim or anything like that that isn't to automatically dismiss the stuff that's happened at Ubisoft I'm you know it would be unlikely that some of it isn't true. Um, among the changes made at the company, the firm has recently reworked its code of conduct, which until now didn't mention harassment as a non-negotiable interdiction. According to an elected representative of the Game Workers Union, the new version will be published this summer. 20,000 members of staff had a half-day training following the crisis, stop using that word, with managers given more advanced sessions fo focusing on accountability. We perceive a desire from management to leave the crisis from summer of 2020 behind as it represents a risk to the group's durability but training must be renewed regularly and offered to new staff for now that request has not been addressed i would probably agree with that if you have a problem with uh managers and and staff uh you know getting handsy these should just be automatic terminations this isn't not a political issue if you have a boss you know uh using their position to get into bed with their subordinates that should be automatically a fireable offense. Absolutely. If you have a boss, you know, inappropriately grabbing on people or making people feel uncomfortable, then that person should go. I 100% agree with that. Now, a Ubisoft representative has responded to the request for comment saying, over a period of several months, 
Ubisoft have implemented major changes across its organization, internal process, and procedures in order to guarantee a safe, inclusive, and respectful working environment for all team members. The representative listed a number of actions the publisher has taken from external investigation of claims to anonymous reporting tools and mandatory training on appropriate workplace conduct. They also pointed to the company's revamped code of conduct, hirings of Grant and Sika, as well as the appointment of Lidwine Sauer as the head of workplace culture. Now, look. If you work at Ubisoft, I would love to hear from you, thequartering at gmail.com. Please, you know, email me. But clearly these are things that they have said they had done. Have they followed through with it? That's, you know, an, a very strong question. Um, but it sounds like they've done a lot. Um, and I always, I mean, I, I again, I don't want to be like super dismissive of uh, people who have, you know, bad things happen to them at work. But I'm just skeptical when you have people like Jason Scryer, who will get like six former employees uh, from a from a company that has you know 50,000 worldwide employees, and write a 20-page expose and talk about how the workplace is awful. I mean, these are six X employees. Um, are they going to have positive things to say? I feel like it's unlikely that everybody agrees otherwise nobody would work there but maybe i'm wrong absolutely it's it's entirely possible um you know when you look at what's going on with the trending uh hashtag it's one of two sides the microtransaction and predatory uh issues with their video games which i can 100 percent get behind and then there's this gripes from employees which again i can't automatically dismiss but then again I'm not going to automatically uh, support either, just for reasons. This listen and believe stuff is baloney sauce. Like, you've got to have proof. Um, and so there are things that have been put forward, and it sounds like there is obviously some claims going on in court. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how this shakes out. Will Ubisoft uh, change anything? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, I genuinely don't. You could see the news today, obviously. You know, made they've reportedly made minimal changes. This is a company that six hours ago made two billion dollars last year. Ubisoft sells sales topping two billion in the fiscal year of 2020. What I'm mostly worried about for fans of, of many of the games that they create, uh, the division, um, you know, or uh, wait, am I why am I always mixing this up? Are they the division? I think so. Um, why am I questioning this? It's been so long since I covered video game stuff. There just hasn't been any, uh, you know, interesting video game news in about. Yeah, it is them. Okay, you know, you they talked about not that long ago how they're moving towards a digital kind of video game thing. Uh, that's going to mean even more microtransactions. Their net bookings were up forty six percent from the previous fiscal year, which totaled two point four two point two billion uh, euro. As a result, digital bookings, I mean, finally, as it turns out, PlayStation is the most lucrative platform with North America, the most lucrative region for Ubisoft. So, yeah, they have massive profits. All I can do is, is say that if you if you don't want to support all of these microtransactions and the way modern AAA video games are going, then you have to actively seek out some indie games and lower your expectations a little bit. Um, but understand that gameplay is still really, really important, and a lot of indie games can really nail that. Or you could just play retro games too, which I strongly recommend. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.